Rebuilding a vintage open steam launch, part 32, fitting a boiler feed hand pump. I really had to think about this. There was a spare union on the water system. Even though at first glance this seems like a large model, and of course it is, but the layout of the drop-in superstructure means that there really is not much room in the boat for things like radio control and boiler feed hand pumps. So I'm trying to think of an alternative to a hand pump. This is a water bypass valve from the inbuilt crankshaft driven pump. And what I thought I may do is put one of these on the end of the pipe as it exits the boat, and then by using a piece of plastic piping, I can then pump water into the boiler using an external hand pump and tank. I would of course have to keep the bypass valve open, but it's going to be open anyway because I certainly do not want the crankshaft pump to pump dirty water from the lake into the boiler. So by the way of an experiment, I quickly made this fitting. This goes from the water bypass valve to what is essentially a compressed air fitting. And I've used these compressed air fittings before, quite successfully, for water feed. But because part of the fitting is made of a plastic material, it can't be near a heat source. In this case, on the bypass valve, it isn't near a heat source. As I mocked up this arrangement, I really thought, no, I don't like it. So I scrapped the idea and instead suddenly came up with the only possible position in the boat where I can put a hand pump, and believe me, it's going to be a very tight fit. But it's not just enough to fit a hand pump somewhere convenient on the boat, there needs to be room to move the handle, and more by luck than good management, this still seems to be in the right place for the movement of the handle. It's not going to catch any of the piping, which is a little bit of a miracle because there's a lot of that. So now I have to dream up some way of mounting this in the boat, and that's quite simple. This pump is designed to be fully immersed in a tank, such as in a small locomotive tender, and for that purpose all it had was just a hole to let the water into the pump. This is no good for me, I need to put a pipe onto this. So I drilled this hole to 7 seconds of an inch, which is tapping size for quarter by 40, and then I remembered, oh hang on a minute, that's a bit small. I need to use a 5 16 by 32 thread per inch union, so that I can use 3 16 pipe, not 5 30 second pipe. The clip currently on screen shows me fitting the quarter by 40 union to the pump, and as you can see when I finally get it fitted, it fits okay, but if I put a 5 16 by 32 union in there, the size of the nut is going to be too big and it's going to foul on the base. So the solution is simple, and all I have to do is make a spacer to stop the nut part of the union from fouling the base of the pump. Then I can fit a 5 16 by 32 union. Using a 9 30 seconds of an inch twist drill, I drilled out the previous threading attempt, then threaded the hole 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. I coated the union with some Loctite 542 thread sealant, and then screwed the whole thing into the pump, not forgetting the spacer. And here's the finished thing, a piped water inlet on a tender hand pump. And time now to make the mounting block. On these rebuilds that you see me doing from time to time, well, fairly frequently I would think, you will notice that just about everything is a prototype. There are no hard and fast set rules, it's just a case of sitting and thinking about it, and then trying things out. Some things don't work, and I don't generally put them in the video. Sometimes, though, I do like to show errors, like the previous clip where I fitted the wrong size union. What I'm doing at the moment is making a mounting block, and I ended up laminating three pieces of mahogany to get the correct height. And then I cut a slot in the mahogany. I use my bandsaw for this, not the milling machine. This is to allow the block to locate on the mounting bracket for the regulator, which is going to be right next to the pump. The next thing to do is to drill some holes in the block. These need to be tapping size for 4BA screws, and 4BA tapping size is 1 8 of an inch. Once the hole positions have been marked with the drill, I can drill the holes to a suitable depth to take some 4BA bolts. I drilled a single counterboard hole in the centre of the three blocks, so I can use a wood screw to fasten the block into the boat. The block will also be fastened into the hole using some epoxy resin so the block is unlikely to move when the pump is being used. The next job is to tap the holes. This is a 4BA tap and I'm going through the holes to cut a 4BA thread in the hardwood. But this is not enough on its own. The threads are quite strong and you could put 4BA bolts in and they'd probably never come loose. But what I also do, again belt and braces approach, is I fill the holes with some cyanoacrylate adhesive 
And here I'm using a panel pin to spread the adhesive into the holes, because what I do not want is a hole absolutely full of cyanoacrylate adhesive. Talking about adhesives, it's a good idea to store epoxy resin upside down. That way when you come to use it, it's already at the right end of the tube. This neat little stand for positioning epoxy resin tubes upside down I've had for ages. And it came with some epoxy resin that had shorter spouts than these, so I need to extend it a little bit. Two pack epoxy like this, and this is five minute epoxy, consists of the epoxy resin and some hardener, and you need to mix them together thoroughly before applying to the work. This clip shows the application of the epoxy resin in the floor of the hull. And I'm going to apply a generous amount of the resin because I do not want this block to ever come loose. The water pump is not a highly stressed part, but when pumping water into a boiler against 80 pounds per square inch, you will find there is considerable resistance on the pump ram. That's why it's very important to make sure that the pump is fastened down in any application, whether it be this boat or on a stationary steam plant. Once the epoxy resin starts to cure, it generally becomes less viscous and finds its way into every nook and cranny. Here I'm screwing the block in place as well. I did drill a pilot hole first, but you couldn't see it for the epoxy resin. I didn't use all the epoxy resin for the block in the boat. I used some to fasten a couple of blocks to the stand, so now it will hold long spouted epoxy resin containers. In this clip, I placed the pump in the position it's going to be in, and I added the piping just to make sure that nothing is fouling, and the good news is nothing is fouling. The arm moves full travel in both directions. So before fitting the pump, here's a little bit of painting. It's a very small bit of painting, don't get too excited. I just wanted to paint it before I fitted the pump. And the next part of the clip is the paint drying. It sat there for quite a while before it dried, and I stopped watching it after about an hour. Then at last it was time to screw the pump into position. I'm using some brass screws for this because I don't want any rust problems. I'd just like to take this opportunity to mention that the cyanoacrylate adhesive that I put into the threaded holes is now fully cured and it's soaked into the threads and they really are incredibly strong. Lightly oil the pump and there we have it. All that remains to be done in this episode is to quickly test the hand pump. So I'm going to pipe some water into the inlet. So when I connect the water and move the handle, the pump works fine. Water comes out of the pipe. This will of course be connected to the boiler clack. And when I put my finger over this pipe to simulate pressure, the water still squirts out at high pressure. In case you wonder why I let the water run into the hull, I thought I'd take this opportunity to see whether the hull was watertight. Because often on old wooden boats, they're not the wood shrinks and cracks, and this is no exception. There's actually a crack which runs all the way down the keel at the opposite side to the one you're currently looking at, and this crack that spreads all the way from the bow to the stern was the first thing I noticed when I initially looked at this boat. It's dripping quite nicely, at least I won't have to bother getting all the water out of the hull, most of it will run out onto the stand. I'm not going to cover the repair in this episode, there will be an episode all about repairing the hull and I will go into detail about problems that I've found in the past with old model boat hulls. That's it for this episode. May all your hand pumps pump sweetly. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.